What's going on you guys? Strange Religion here out of Midnight Nation, your upcoming Bless Emissary for the global launch. This is just going to be a really short video on um, making a clan in Bless Online. So what you're going to do is you're going to come over to this uh, managing the guild NPC. They're pretty much everywhere. Currently we're in the capital city of Heron. Heracon! And you've got um, the capital war manager and the managing the guild NPC, but in almost every small city um, you have a managing the guild um, NPC. So it's it starts right where all the players start off. Um, they're all over the place, so you won't really have to worry while leveling about finding one. And then traveling between a lot of these places on your uh, Weirvins is going to be very, very quick. So going from Hirakon to, for instance, Cardi University um, via the Dragon Tamer or Weirvin, depending on what version you're playing on, um, it's going to be really fast. Maybe it only takes, I want to say, about a minute or less to fly there. But if you're walking, it's going to take somewhere around maybe 10 minutes. So the other day we walked from Hirakon down to Kiri, and it took 25 minutes. So um, it's a very, very long process of walking, but it's very similar to BDO in that you will um, auto-walk there by pushing V. So anyway, back to guilds. So you're going to come up to um, the guild NPC here. And then you just need three players in your party that do not have guilds. It's about 10 silver, very, very cheap. I've made several gold just by getting to level 13. Um, and then you're going to type in the box, but it, it cannot exceed a certain amount of letters, which I believe is 12. So once you create that guild, you're going to have access to a lots of interesting information here. You see that we need um, 17 guild experience just to level up to level 2. And then we do only have those three members right now, and it will also show your influence points, which your members will receive daily and weekly um, with caps. And then you'll also get governance points for taking control of sectors. So we're going to take a very quick look at these different Citadel sectors, and there's going to be five for Hyron. And what's interesting to note here is that there's only four guilds which control these five Citadels. Um, one of them is FEMC, you've got Placidas, and so these have 89 and 92 members. But then when we move down over here, um, this Japanese guild has 79 members and actually owns two different territories. So I'm not 100% sure on bidding yet or when those times will begin, but you do see that there's going to be five possible clans who will have control of Citadel as far as Heron is concerned. I'm pretty sure Union is going to have the same thing. So if we take a look at the world map, um, you can see these clan symbols on the map. So here's the guild that owns two different places. Um, they just have that top right full control and then also one of the, um, one of the citadels down here. And then when we go over to Union, we actually cannot see um, those territories. So Union will have to keep you guys updated with the Union political drama on the global release servers for EU and NA. Now moving back into the actual guild itself, when we go over to control, you see that you do have some forms of control here, and you'll be able to um, add or delete ranks, um, and then set permissions for these ranks. The permissions are pretty basic. Um, it's just going to be guild management for editing the welcome notice, and then the ability to invite or kick members. And obviously, as you go down the list, um, you're going to run into the last thing. So the guild owner can do everything, the right hand can pretty much do everything, and then recruits can do nothing. Um, as far as Guild War goes, I think this is what most of us are um, very interested in, that PvP aspect of the war. So when you're fighting, uh, when you're on Hyron, you'll be openly fighting any Union members in, in any of the uh, PvP zones, which are all these cross swords. So there's going to be a ton, a ton of zones where you're just going to be fighting from about level 30 onward. You're going to be running into some serious PvP. Here you see um, we've got a, a level 37 dungeon here, and that is already in a neutral zone. So that dungeon is probably going to be camped as you do have to go to the dungeons, um, similar to old WoW Vanilla, in order to um, go to the dungeons. So you can party match, but everyone's going to have to meet up at the dungeon itself. Um, and it is also in a little bit of a corner here, so you can see where the availability to camp this dungeon is going to be pretty high as it's up on that mountain. Um, and then going back, let's take a look very quick at these guild wars. So guild wars are going to be your declaration on a friendly faction guild. And so it's going to be really awesome because your guild can be up to 10 wars every two weeks and you have the availability to deck on 7. So every two weeks your war decks will reset and only the guild master can declare the war and the guild's going to have to be at least level 8. So I don't expect um, any guilds are going to hit level 8 um, probably anywhere in the first two weeks as the, the guild member cap is going to start at 10 and then move up to 20 and then 30. So as we start to get more players in the clan, 
uh, excuse me, in the guild, um, you're going to obviously start to level up a bit quicker, especially because some of the mounts and pets in the game can roll um, particular skills of different grades, like low, medium, and high, that increase the amount of uh, guild experience people are contributing. So the victory condition on the Japanese version is the first to kill 100 players. So you can definitely see since the guild member cap is 120 that some of those wars are going to be really, really quick, especially if you do some sort of scrimmage or you just decide, you know, Tuesday night at 8 p.m., um, we're going to go ahead and fight guild versus guild. And if everyone's lined up and everyone's, you know, clustered up and that you just have a big battle, like a big scrimmage, that war is going to be over really, really quick. Um, and then if neither guild has killed 10 or more players by the end of 24 hours, that will result in a draw. You do have a season history um, and a war history, and there is going to be some guild ranks. Um, lastly, I would like to move over and take a look at the banner. Uh, the guild logo is actually really good in this game. Um, you see there's several different symbols here. We'll go ahead and just count them for um, you know, austerity's sake. So we've got six, one, two, three, four, five. All right, so we have uh, 31 different guild symbols. And then you're going to have a huge color palette with multiple backgrounds. I also have to assume that it's possible that a convenience or cosmetic shop would offer a different um, symbol and maybe a, some sort of different interesting background color. And if that's not a thing, then um, devs, I highly suggest you look into that. Um, if you had the availability to let us upload logos for you know, X amount of Lumina, I'm sure a lot of people would be interested in that and consider that fair play and obviously not pay to win. So we'll just click around to some different colors here. Um, take a look at some of these symbols. And then you can change the palette as well. And then lastly guys, we're gonna take a very short look here at the capital city sieges, which I cannot translate. Um, hopefully I can get this translated sooner than later. But um, so, I'm gonna move on to the battlefield. Oh, sorry. Okay, so you wanna participate in the capital war. So it's gonna bring up the, attack, uh, the attacking participating guild and then the defensive participating guild or guilds. And so I'm gonna click this help menu. And this is what I'm gonna need translated at some point. But just for now, we'll take a look at the, uh, mostly just the battlefield um, map itself. I think that's what we're going to be most interested. So you can see that it's going to have at least a 40 minute or above battle. And right here we have one attacking guild versus two uh, defending guilds. And so here's the actual battlefield map. It's going to become an instance of the capital city itself um, with some defensive positions around these doors as well as some um, buff stations and respawn areas. And then as the battle progresses, you see that the respawns will move around the map as different objectives are captured. And so these are your altars, similar to like a Lineage 2 Revolution style siege. Um, it is going to be uh, 100 versus 100 as far as I'm aware. Alright you guys, that is the end of this video. It's just a very basic informational video about making a guild. Um, here, here at the very, very end though, let me just quickly go over um, the, the information list. So you can switch it. It starts off with members info so you can see where they're at. It's really easy to just invite people from this menu. Um, party invite add friend you know change their ranks very very easy a uh, ui system here and then you can also switch it to seeing their members influence points and that has ha that does have excuse me a total for the day which will reset around 5 a.m and it also has a weekly influence which also resets at 5 a.m so we're looking probably at a 5 a.m reset here um for the na release as well and so the daily and weeklies will switch and then what's kind of interesting is to also look at um, the daily things that we can do as far as orders go. And th these are your daily and weekly orders. And I believe this will also add to your adventure um, guild member contribution. Other than doing dungeons and PvP, um, I believe this also adds to your, your guild member um, experience. And so you can do these dailies and these weeklies and you'll get rewards. And these also reset at 5 a.m. Alright you guys, Strange Religion is out of here, hope to see you guys in game. Uh, I've got a link to the different ranks of guilds and how much experience you're going to need um, and what each new guild rank adds as far as cap and guild buffs go. Um, that'll be right below the video along with our Discord link. Thank you guys so much, it has been a pleasure as always.